in the final video of my 12 part series running through my 101 through the 112 we keep going on through this insanely deep wide receiver class now hitting on my wide receiver nine and the 112 and one quarterback leagues staying in the second round of super flex leagues we hit on wait a second hold on a second that's better Penn State wide receiver Jahan Dotson. And it's about time that we talked about the true wide receiver one in this class, or at least the number one in my heart, because I love Jahan Dotson. He was absolutely electric all season for Penn State last year. He was the go-to guy to make a play. He was used all over the field running different routes. He's better than KJ Hamler was coming out of Happy Valley. But it pains me to have him ranked as the wide receiver nine in this class, which I think is both a testament to this class overall, but also on his profile, which is just not as good as his suggested first round NFL draft capital would make you think. But let's start first by looking at his career at Penn State, which started in 2018 as the team's wide receiver four in his freshman season. And he put up an okay 13 receptions for 203 yards in eight games. Not really much to talk about here. So we can move on to 2019. Dotson is now the wide receiver two on the team after Juwan Johnson transferred. DeAndre Tompkins graduated. He's still third on the totem pole, though, behind KJ Hamler and Pat Frymuth, but he still managed to haul in 27 receptions for 488 yards and five touchdowns. This season was very close to that sophomore 20% breakout that you would love to see from your wide receivers, but he fell just slightly short as most of Penn State's offense that year was funneled through the aforementioned KJ Hamler and Pat Fryermuth. But that did change a little bit in 2020 as KJ Hamler went on to the NFL and Fryermuth missed a handful of games with injury. So now Dotson has his chance as the guy, and he was basically the entire offense that year, catching 52 passes for 884 yards and eight touchdowns in a slightly shortened COVID season. No other player on Penn State had more than 500 yards except for Dotson and his yards and touchdowns were essentially 50% of quarterback Sean Clifford's production that season. But despite his breakout junior year, Dotson decided to return to Penn State for a fourth season and what a fourth season he had because he caught 91 receptions for 1,182 yards and 12 touchdowns. Honestly, it probably could have been even better if Clifford didn't get hurt against Iowa, which I am still totally not salty about, but he was great all year long and he beat up on Wisconsin with five for 102 and one. Woo! He torched Ohio State for 11, 127 and one and Michigan State for eight for 137 and one. And then he also set a school record against Maryland for most receiving yards in a game with 11 for 242 and three. Hey everybody, real quick, I just wanted to let you guys know that we at DLF have just dropped the 2022 Dynasty Draft Guide. This is an amazing resource to help dominate your startup drafts for the remainder of 2022 that is just gonna be constantly updated as the NFL moves and changes from the remainder of the spring into the NFL Draft through the rest of the summer. So this is an amazing resource that includes a whole bunch of articles on different strategies to take in your startup drafts, different things to do with your 2023 rookie picks, leverage trades, sleepers, breakouts, busts, late round targets, deep stashes, all of that stuff and more is inside of this jam-packed resource to help you guys dominate and crush your startup drafts. You can gain access to this right now if you become a DLF Premium subscriber. The link and everything will be down in the descriptions. If you become a DLF Premium subscriber, you will gain access to this amazing resource for 100% free. So go check it out, gain access, dominate your startup drafts, and let's get you right back to this amazing DLF YouTube video. So let's move on to the analytics because let me remind you, of my 12 marker system for wide receivers, which is just a series of check boxes that I want my receivers to hit based on what successful NFL receivers did in college. And using this system, Dotson comes in hitting on only five markers, which is not great, and the lowest of the receivers that I have broken down so far in this class, which is why he comes in as my wide receiver nine. He currently hits on 30% breakout age for 2020, best and last yards per team pass attempt, best market share of yards in the season, and 40 time with a 4-4-3 from the combine. And if he is drafted in the first or second round in the NFL draft, he will also hit on that marker, bringing him to six total markers hit. But then the other six markers that he is missing on are age since he just turned 22 after staying all four years in college, 20% breakout age since he just missed that in 2019, first yards per team pass attempt, which you can't really do anything about from his freshman year, and then height because he is five foot 11, so he's below six foot. BMI, since he is 5'11", 178, 
And then even though he ran a 443 at his weight, that was not fast enough to break 100 speed score. So you can kind of start to see why Dotson is my wide receiver nine in this class because he is undersized despite being pretty fast. He had great production. He just did it all in his final two years and not earlier in college. And he's not an early declare, which historically four year players have not been great moving to the NFL. But he did have great production. He is fast. He might even be a first round pick in the NFL draft, which is better draft capital than maybe a handful of receivers that I have ranked ahead of him currently. So maybe I am too low on my wide receiver one in my heart, Jahan Dotson. And I was actually asked in my comments of the previous video on Sky Moore, what makes more my wide receiver eight ahead of Dotson if Dotson might have better draft capital as a first round player, which overall is a fantastic question. And I thought I should actually extend this with head to heads with a few players that I rank above Jahan Dotson. So first off, Dotson versus Chris Olave, which on paper, they are pretty similar players, but Olave is my wide receiver four and Dotson my wide receiver nine. The difference here is production early in their career as Olave had a breakout sophomore season that Dotson didn't and then maintain that production through the rest of his career like Dotson did, but in this case with Garrett Wilson and a future stud wide receiver in Jackson Smith and Jigba. And this is a similar situation for Dotson versus my wide receiver five, David Bell, because Bell did it from day one and never stopped. He's just not as athletic as Dotson, but that production was there early and often for David Bell. Next up, Dotson versus Jameson Williams. Williams is younger. He had a better single season of production at a better college and against better defenses in the SEC while also being faster and taller. George Pickens had the beginnings of an elite college career from day one as well at Georgia. He's also younger and bigger, and I think that his ceiling in the NFL is just much higher overall than Jahan Dotson's as a more prototypical team wide receiver one. Sky Moore, similar to Bell, did it early and often as well, while also being younger and faster with a bigger frame for his body. And if you haven't learned by now, I love Jahan Dotson, but my fear is how he will be utilized in the NFL, similar to one of my fears with Jamison Williams. Dotson is not an alpha in the NFL. He can be a team wide receiver one, but he would be better if someone else was on the opposite end, either as the wide receiver two or one B to a 1A or just straight up one. And if you look at Dotson's comps in my database, the two guys that come right to the top are Deshaun Jackson and Tyler Lockett, which is like a super specific role in the NFL as a vertical threat who could do a few things more than just be that straight nine route guy. But Deshaun Jackson was not an alpha. He broke out early with the Eagles while also playing with Jeremy Macklin in a 100 plus target tight end in Brent Selleck. He did the same thing in Washington with Pierre Garçon and Jordan Reed. Tyler Lockett is the same type of guy as we know who thrived off insane efficiency with Russell Wilson, but he also needed DK Metcalf as Lockett didn't have his first 1,000 yard season until Metcalf got there in 2019. So the recipe for Dotson is pretty similar. We need a more alpha wide receiver across from him, or like I said, a very good 1A. And also a good quarterback wouldn't hurt since Deshaun Jackson had Donovan McNabb and Lockett had Russell Wilson. So with that recipe, let's talk landing spots because there is a good chance, as I mentioned a couple times, that Dotson is a back-end first-round pick in the NFL draft. And those would be teams that mainly all fit the bill for where we need Dotson to go. And I mean, number one and two, the Chiefs and the Packers. I mean, I don't really think I need to say anything else there. Those are the number one and number two teams for any rookie wide receiver in this class. And if Dotson were to end up on either one of those teams, that's just right to the moon. Number three, the Buffalo Bills. Again, great quarterback, wide receiver two, deep threat to Stephon Diggs. Move over Gabe Davis because a better version of you is coming to town. The Cardinals to replace Christian Kirk with an aging DeAndre Hopkins and again, a good quarterback in Kyler Murray. So, yep. But if you were to fall to the second round, my hope would be either Chicago or Indianapolis where he can be that 1B with either Mooney or Pittman. And I would honestly even be okay if he went to the Detroit Lions if Malik Willis was their quarterback because in my head, Malik Willis throwing bombs to Deshaun Watson sounds really, really fun. But I also think that he would pair really nicely with Amon Ross St. Brown and TJ Hawkinson on the team. I just really hope that he's not a Jaguar, Jet, or Giant Please do not let that happen. I will be sad. So that is my breakdown of my 112 Jahan Dotson. Make sure you hit that like button to let me know that you also love yourself some Jahan Dotson, just probably not as much as I do. 
Let me know down in the comments who you would love to see draft Jahan Johnson and where, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed to get more content from the DLF YouTube channel as we continue on through rookie draft season with the NFL draft approaching rapidly. So with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.